really, really should not have been that hard. Here are Adam and Eve. They're placed in this perfect situation. Everything going for them, all their needs provided for, and yet they have to choose the one thing God says no about. Then they have these two boys, Cain, Abel, and what happens? Cain kills his own brother? Seriously? Adam and Eve have a third son named Seth. Time moves on, but on a scale we don't even understand. When we dip back into the story, the world has just degenerated into a cesspool. God saw this and said, I regret ever making this bunch. What a mess they've made of it. Every inclination of their hearts is always and only toward evil. So he decided to wipe the slate clean. Not just the slate, he decided to wipe the granite clean, the marble clean, everything clean. But there was one good person in the middle of this mess. His name, in fact, meant comfort. We know him as Noah. There's one good man who not only walks in the pathways of God, but obeys God. He is a man who is righteous. God said to him, Noah, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. I'm going to rescue from what I'm going to do. I am sick and tired of these people, their constant, their constant twistedness, their constant decision against me. I lament ever making them. And in fact, Noah, you better sit down for this. They want violence. I'll show them violence. I'll show them violence on a scale they've never seen before. We'll make up the word biblical proportion. I'm going to wipe them all out. I suppose I could do it with an earthquake. I suppose I could do it with a fire. I suppose I could do it with a pandemic. But no, we're going to roll back this. We're going to roll back the tape. We're going to go back to day three of creation. Before there was breath on the earth. I will cleanse the earth of all the evil of everything that breathes except Noah, I want you to do something. I want you to build a farm slash lifeboat. Just try to imagine it with me, Noah. Okay, we're going to build a big wooden structure. I want you to make it out of cypress. I want it to be able to float because I'm going to make it rain like you've never seen it rain. So I want you to make it out of cypress wood. I want you to make it 100 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, 30 cubits tall. I want it to have three decks. I want you to put a roof over the whole thing. I want you to put one door in it, one window in it. And then I'm going to shelter you and the animals in this farm slash lifeboat. Noah did it. He and his three sons, their wives, they built this boat. I mean, this is a substantial undertaking. Now, if you think you get funny looks at the restaurant when you pray over your meal, you should try building an ark in your backyard. You're building this ark. It's unprecedented. It's unreasonable. It doesn't make sense. It's ridiculous. It is to be ridiculed. Especially by a people whose every inclination of their heart was only and always toward evil. Noah builds this farm slash lifeboat. The day comes. I know what day it was. It was the 17th day of the second month when Noah, his wife,
their three sons and the three sons' wives all were able to go into this ark. They went inside and God brought the animals aboard. Two animals, male and female, of the species and of the edible species, seven pairs each. So Noah and his family all gather inside the ark. They're in it for seven days before it actually starts raining. You can think day one, Noah says, okay, this is gonna be a great adventure. Day two, he's like, hey, anybody wanna play Scrabble? Day three, he's like, oh, I think it's gonna start raining soon now. Day four, he's like, be patient. Day five, he's, no, we're not there yet. Day six, he's like, seriously? Day seven, I smell rain. They're inside, the door is shut, it begins to rain. It's not just a shower, it's not just a downpour. This is an opening of the floodgates of heaven as well as the floodgates of the ocean. The springs of the ocean are opened up. This is not a storm, this is a tsunami coming at them from all sides. This continues 40 days, 40 nights until the earth is covered with water. The first to die would have been the short animals. Then would have come the animals and people who weren't able to get to higher ground. Then would have come the animals and people that were able to get to higher ground, those that were able to climb trees. And finally, there had to have been the last person alive the last person with breath in his or her lungs. And then he or she also died. Can you imagine the corpses on the top of the waves, the, the senseless loss of life as righteous justice breaks out? as everyone receives what they deserve. And in the middle of these corpses and debris, in the middle of the floatsome, here bobs a safe place. Here bobs this farm slash lifeboat. The rain had subsided, the Waters had gone down enough that the ark grounded itself. But still, it wasn't safe to go out. Noah opened the window, sent out a raven. That didn't help. Later, sent out a dove. Dove came back. Later, sent out the dove. The dove comes back with a leaf in its beak. And Noah understands that the vegetation has sprouted. The water is down. The next time he sends the dove out, the dove doesn't even come back. And no one knows it's time to open the door. They open the door. They all pile out of the ark. This handful of survivors in a world that's been washed clean. God gives them the exact same command he had given to Adam and Eve. Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Let's try it again, take two. Noah takes rocks. He builds an altar of thanks. And in this first thanksgiving, he takes some of these edible animals that he has nurtured for nearly a year. He kills them and he sacrifices them as a sacrifice of thanks to the God who has protected him through this amazing adventure. As the fire crackles under them and as they are cooked, the aroma ascends to God who finds it pleasing. In this memory of the sacrifice of Abel, the dead brother, this memory of a pleasing sacrifice. And God says to Noah, never again will I wipe out all breath upon the earth. Never again. 
even though every inclination of their heart is evil from childhood, even though that's true, I'm not going to wipe them out again. I will be patient with them. I promise you that as long as the earth endures, I will never destroy all life on earth again. As long as the earth endures, there will be springtime and harvest. There will be cold and heat. There will be winter and summer. There will be day and there will be night. I promise. And that's one small part of God's big story.